What's up everyone, welcome back. And if you are new here, welcome to my channel where we talk about all things volleyball. I'm talking fast because I'm so excited. I have a very special guest today, my teammate here in Zaksa, Polish superstar, Alexander Szlivka Olek. Thanks for being here, how are you? Hello everyone, uh, I'm fine, I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, it's first time that uh, foreign, yes. foreign, foreign player is there, so I'm really happy to be to be the first one. And um, uh, you were begging me from the beginning of the season to be yeah, here, so yeah, here I here I am. Let's do this. I'm so excited again. Thanks for being here. Like it took us nine months and possibly, quite possibly, just a couple of drinks to convince Oleg to come on the channel. So we're so happy to be here. But first things first, let's get to know Oleg a little bit better. Just a couple of his career accomplishments here. 2018 FIVB World Championship Gold, 2021 CEV Champions League Final Gold, plus MVP, 2019-2022 Polish Plus Liga Champion, and Polish Cup Champion 2019-2021-2022 Gold as well. That's only the gold medals, guys. Oh, look, when I say all of that, you're young, you're a young player. How does that make you feel? How do you feel about all of that? I feel I feel happy for what I uh, what I have accomplished uh, till now, but I'm for sure hungry for more. Uh, I want to accomplish more with, with my club, with my national team. Uh, I'm happy to be here in Zaksa because this club gives me opportunity to play for the for the trophies, uh, not only in Poland but in, in Europe. Uh, we have we have some, some final in one week that uh, in a few days. We'll talk about it. We'll talk uh, about it. That we can turn it into another goal. So another thing is national team. Of course, it's always uh, the big thing for me to represent my country and as we all know, Poland is really, really strong and also competitive with USA and other teams for, for other trophies, so yeah. yeah. Uh, I want more, for sure, I'm, I'm happy with what I accomplished till now, but I want to win, you want uh, more. I want to win more. As we all do, I mean, that's incredible. Accomplished so much already in your young career and you want more, so I think that's such a great lesson for young players out there. Stay hungry, keep working, keep improving, and you never know what you're gonna accomplish, so again. Amazing career so far, Oleg, and you're gonna do more things, I know it. So, that's amazing. But before we get into today's video, you guys, like we always do with our guests, we're gonna get to know Oleg just a little bit better with a quick game of this or that. Yeah. All right, Oleg, I'm gonna give you two options, and you're gonna say whatever you feel like, which one you like more off the top of your head, okay? Got it? Yeah. First one, like we always do, coffee or tea? Coffee. How many a day? One. Like Only one? Maybe sometimes two, but I'm not the coffee addict, but I oh. want, I just like it more than tea. How many before games? Never in a game day. It's my habit. Like, I have a lot I'm shocked, I'm <laughs> shocked. <laughs> he, he does have a lot of habits, a lot of different rituals, superstitions. I had no idea. That's crazy to me, because I'm like, never mind, more. Wow, okay. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Do you like to get up early or do you like to stay up late? I think night owl. Uh, but lately? <laughs> yeah, lately, um, during the playoff time, where, when you have more and more stress and then everything, I was, and more sun, of course, yes. in Poland. That's good. Uh, it's a good I was thing. I was waking up uh, early, like 6:30, uh, for two weeks, like straight. Uh, but normally, I'm I like to sleep a lot. Night owl. I think I'm the same. But yeah. okay, next question. Do you like to work ahead and start early, or do you like to procrastinate and wait till the last second? Um, I'm always waiting till till the last moment. Uh, I think I'm I'm that that kind of guy. <laughs> Um, like I, even if, if I have a chance, I have a time to, to do something, I'm wait, waiting to the last moment to and do everything in, in stress and chaos like... Uh, yeah, like most of us. Yeah, like most of us. So. Got it. All right, if you go on a holiday, which volleyball players don't have holiday, do you want to go to the mountain or to the beach? I think to the beach. Like Good I'm, answer. Yeah, to Hawaii and yeah, beach. Yeah, <laughs> one day, one day. I've never been there, but I, I, hope, I hope so. I will. I would do, do nice. this. The beach, it's very nice. Okay, you're watching American professional sports sometimes, right? Yes. Okay, NBA or NFL? NBA. So you're really liking right now, what's what's playoff time? Yeah, um, uh, of course, the, uh, we have this time difference, so I, I can't uh, watch during during the week. I cannot watch the, the games live. Only the weekend games, like Sunday, mm. Saturday, Sunday. It's very early in States, so, so we, no can, <laughs> we, can, we can watch it here. And it's playoff time, so it's really uh, the draft lottery was was yesterday. Yeah. Orlando Magic is selecting with the first pick. Yeah, I totally so, um, knew that. 
I totally knew that. So I think and NBA. I'm really I'm really following NBA so much, but not the not the NFL, not okay. the MLB, not the NHL, not the things like this. I'm only NBA fan. Are there any Polish players in the NBA? Uh, for not no, for now not. But we have one player in draft that will probably go lottery pick. Nice fan over here. Okay, we're gonna move on to some volleyball questions. Like, still the same thing with volleyball. Would you rather win a match in three easy or win a difficult match in five sets? Always to win easy, like, <laughs> uh, because it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, less demanding, like physically also. Yes, you true, can, true. You can, you can rest, you can save, save your energy for the next game, because if you play a lot, and we were playing a lot this season, you, you need this energy for the next games. Uh, and of course, if it's coming to the to this, uh, like, final or something, uh, games for the, like, Champions League final, you always want to, to have this 3-2, 15-13 in the fifth set, dramatic uh, tiebreak, but, oh no, I want. <laughs> Three if we zero. Can, if we can do this, uh, I want to do this in three sets. I think that's like a, a common thing that people think like, oh, we really want the hard five set game. But we just figured out that we're going to be playing 50 matches this season, you guys. 50 on Sundays, our 50th game. So all five setters, no thank you. Okay, straight down spike or monster block? Uh, I think monster block. Uh, I'm not getting this straight down spike so often. I'm not specialist in that. Um, if you if you ask me straight down spike or tip, I would say tip for sure. Uh, yeah, but I, the like the feeling after the monster block is is for me the better. I agree. Well, I don't know. But <laughs> I agree. Sure. Perfect reception or amazing defense? Amazing defense, like the digging, uh, the balls are sometimes changing the, the attitude of the, of the team, changing the game, like we had uh, a few examples in the in the finals, in the, the games against Estrembe, in like in difficult moments we were digging the ball, finishing the spikes and like it's, uh, your opponent is getting uh, frustrated by it and you are getting uh, like more power, more positive energy and uh, you are feeling that you, you will win this game, so, so I think it's is the better thing. Yeah, I think I agree. I mean, I like to do both, obviously, but I think for the course of a game, a big defense can really frustrate your opponent a little bit more than a perfect pass. So try to work on your defense and can definitely win some games for you. Okay, last question here. Pretty impossible question that I'm asking, but we talked about your accomplishments earlier, but winning the world championship with Poland or winning the CEV Champions League with Zaksa? So it's it's really a tough question for me, like impossible question <laughs> yeah. to, to answer. You have to answer. Both things are really big yeah. ac accomplishments, uh, but if I have to choose, uh, I would choose the uh, national team, a uh, gold medal of world championship, uh, because it's really big honor for a Polish person like me to win something with the national team. Like all Poland is uh, is happy, all Poland is proud of us, uh, and you could you could feel that you could you could feel that. Of course, the here in Kędzierzyn we have amazing community, amazing fans, and everything. But uh, it's also the big accomplishment to win the Polish championship or CV Champions League here. Uh, but national team is something different. I agree, and guess. Who who they beat in the semi-final of that world championship, us. But anyway, congrats on that. <laughs> anyway, that was the last question. Now we know a little bit more about Alexander Slivka. All right guys, we're finally gonna get into today's video. Today we're gonna be watching the fourth match from the final series of the Polish Plus Liga between Zaksa, our team, and... Jastrzemski Węgiel. That's how you say it. I have been butchering that name all season, but we're gonna be watching the end of the third set from our match last Saturday. Pretty awesome to watch. Before we get into that, Oleg, how did you feel heading into this fourth match of the finals? To be honest with you, uh, I was I was stressed before this game, like never never before this season. Really? Oh. Because well, we lost. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah, because we lost this uh, closing closing series game in at home. Like yes. everyone, everything was prepared. Everyone was. Uh, happy to, to finish that in, in Kędzierzyn, but it's not that easy if you play against Jastrzemski Węgiel, if you play the finals of the Plus Liga. Uh, so maybe uh, maybe our head was not prepared, like everything was prepared. So like uh, we lost also our great middle blocker Norby uh, due to injury. So we uh, we hope we love you, Norby. He will come back stronger and he as soon as it pos as it's possible. Yeah, in 100% shape. Uh, so yeah, so I had a lot of thoughts. 
thoughts, uh, a lot of worries before this game, but uh, starting the game I was focused also like never before, so all this stress I converted into, into focus. That's awesome, I mean that's so great to hear from such an amazing player like Oleg that you can turn these nerves, being nervous, into something positive, into that focus, into that intensity. And I think it's something that we've been able to do all season. Like, oh look, I was also very feeling stressed and nervous about this game from losing the third match of the finals. But I thought it was really cool how we came together, super focused. What do you think we did to get that focused in that last match? How do you think we got there? into that mentality. I think we, we prepared our minds better. We were like uh, focused on every single every single action, every single ball. We didn't think uh, that we have to win this game, that yeah. we also only think about next next ball, what to do, what adjustments we can do on the next balls, what we can do better, not on not on final results. So I think that mentality changed and so uh, we just played a better game like yeah. uh, I think each of us played better and as a team of course, it was the, the better game. Exactly. All right, let's just get into the video. We're gonna be starting it in the third set. We were down seven to eight, and guess who's starting first? This guy, let's go. We are losing seven to eight, third set, we're up two to zero. What's going on in your head? Well, uh, I was struggling on the serve uh, from the beginning of this game. So I was just focusing on, on good toss, on catching the ball uh, as high as it possible on straight, on straight arm. Uh, and it's, I think, first rotation of, of Jastrzemski, so I, my goal was just to avoid Libero. <laughs> mm. Good strategy. Okay. Avoided the Libero. Pretty good pass here. <laughs> okay, that's the ball. <laughs> so I was looking for a play, you guys, to start this video, and this was just the perfect play because Oleg was serving, and then, well, this happened. Very nice serve. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what were you thinking when this happened? Uh, I was just thinking you to be okay. I was hoping that you are okay, oh, that you can you. you can continue continue playing uh, because it was so hard. Like Boyer was killing it this last two games of the finals from position four. Uh, he was going over each spike, like from my my perception. So I was just hoping you can you can play the next ball. <laughs> I was actually pretty close to going out for a point or two because I was just, it was, things were like spinning, things were... Concussions are not a joke, everyone. If you don't feel like playing because of your head, maybe take a break, but I felt fine. I told myself because Cleveno was about to serve, he's gonna serve you. I was like, he's gonna serve me this fall because I was like a little bit, woo. Yeah, but so, I'm not serving you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like very focused. Everything was fine, I felt fine. Here we go, next point. So Cleveno kind of has this serve that you can, he can float, he can jump. It's really hard to, to judge it, but I think in general we did a pretty good job because we stayed balanced. We didn't move forward or backwards too much because he can float and jump. And then like David always does, just gets up really early and crushes the ball. So a very a nice side out, nothing really to say about that, except that I was just happy to pass the ball after I got Destroyed. My jaw hurt you guys for like a day or two after that, but we're all good. Okay, David serving here. David had been serving really well, right into that seam. Seven puts it down. We always talk about serving right in between the passers, just like this, you guys on this channel. Is that something that you try to do as a server, is to get in between the players? Yeah, of course. Uh, always the conflict zone are, are really dangerous for the opposing team uh, because First of all, you are not risking so much to the sidelines, so uh, you put the ball in the in the middle court. But if you can search this in between area, it's really really hard for them to uh, to pass it well. So it's it's good strategy. And that's what David did here. He put it right in between the players. I don't think it was David's hardest serve, but when you put it in between the players, there's always conflict. You never know. And then Salmon puts the overpass down. Nice play, David. Again, now it's nine to nine. At the lead, bro. Not much to say here. In general, you might not want to serve the Libro. It happens, I get served, Popivchak gets served, he's really good. But in general, you might want to avoid them just to make the outsides work. And then here, let's see this block. I don't block, I don't have much to say. Do you have much to say about this block? I think it was a good block because it was a really, uh, really fast set and going yeah. like through seven and a half meters maybe. 
real long, so yeah. it's not easy. It's not easy to for Pepe. Pepe is there. Yeah, it's not easy for Pepe to arrive on time. So he was there, but not so high, and she was spiked it over the block. Really yeah, inspired. exactly. When there's a an offense that is setting the ball like on a line to the outside, it's pretty hard to block if they're in system like that. So what the blockers try to do is just take up certain space, and as defenders, we're trying to be around that block and try to dig it. In this case, Shimura, they're outside, hit it pretty hard. So it's pretty hard to dig. All right, this guy, I can't even say his name. <laughs> Vishnevsky. Yes, that. His serve is interesting. It's a float, it's a hybrid, it's Short sometimes. Sure, it looks crazy. How do how do you prepare for a serve like this? How do you get ready? Well, uh, we played a lot of games against them, and I was playing uh, with him in one team two years in Zaxa when he was a Zaxa player. So I let's say I know where he can uh, do a hybrid when he can do a float. It's uh, obviously it's not uh, readable all the time, yeah. but uh, in some in some moments I was able to read at least read what he will what he will gonna do. Of course, not direction of the not the, but I was uh, trying to read uh, what kind of serve he will do. So that was making yeah. the the job a little bit easier for us. Of, but of course, it's not not that easy to pass this ball. No, it's not. <laughs> all right, let's see how you passed it. Not bad. Not your best. Yeah. Do you remember it? No, probably not. But Elvis is doing a really good job on yeah. this uh, half good, let's say half good yeah. uh, passes. He's arriving at the ball. He always has this long setback that they have to be ready. Yeah. And we have Semen in fourth that is changing this. Yeah, and Semen goes balls on the block. right off the high hands. We talk about high hands. It's very nice to hit high hands. Got the perfect touch and the point. All right, Wukash serving Kachmarak down the line. He's been working on that serve a lot lately. The block, we go crazy. This was a nice block because we knew that their outside hitters, their position for Shimura, Klevno, Farnal, they really like to hit the outside of the hand. So we said, we're gonna have a really strong right hand here. Elvis, he came in a little bit actually, but stayed strong on the right and got that job because they had been tooling out. So that was a really nice block. And honestly, a little bit of a game changer here to know that we could stop their like annoying, annoying points like that. So nice block there. Lukash serving. How long have you been playing with Lukash? Oh, how long I, yeah. I'm playing with Lukash? It's fourth, our fourth season together. Like we came to Zaxa together uh, before the uh, 1912, no, 1819 season. Okay. And it was a good season. We we won the Polish Cup. We won the Polish Championship. And yeah, we are. I really like it. He's my roommate, so we are we are together here four <laughs> years. We are friends, so uh, I'm happy to to play with him. Nice. So he puts a, a good serve here. They pass it well. They're a strong passing team. Boye here just goes up, over. Not much we can really do about that one. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was really really spiking over sometimes in this game three and game four. Yeah, and I remember I was uh, we were close with Zvezhu to to get this ball up, but it was so strong that we couldn't uh, react in time. Yeah, I remember him hitting it super shallow too, like into the court. It was impossible to stand there. Nice. We're gonna go back to that one. Oh, actually I remember this, but this pass was so nice. Let's see if we can slow-mo. It's hard to see guys, this angle is not great. His angle is great. His passing angle is great. This camera angle is not great. You get your shoulders over, arms are out, angle's nice. We talk about angles all the time in practice, so that was awesome. A Little bit of a miss hit here. Their defense gets up. This is the ball I actually thought that we were gonna block with three. You can see Semen goes over, but then he doesn't block. And Shimura just puts it right next to Pepe. A little bit of a, maybe a miscommunication. I thought that Semenuk was gonna block. He didn't block. I didn't move my defense. We didn't really adjust. Boya again, I think he misses this one. Yep, we'll take it. We will take all the points <laughs> we yeah. can get. All right, Semen serving. You're in the front row now. Ooh. That is a gnarly serve. You know why? Because he so practices. How fast this is? 112 or 122? 
112? I think 112 kilometers an hour. But what he does on this serve, and we've seen it in training a little bit, is that he changes the spin on his serve. So when he serves from five to five like that, he actually turns his thumb down instead of pinky down. So most right-handers are gonna hit this way. But like a lefty, or a salmon in this case, he changed the spin, which is why it went away from that area six passer, which has happened to me, and I'm sure <laughs> you in training yeah. sometimes. It's just, it's a crazy serve. That's all you can say. And you're not expecting that kind of spin. We are up 13 to 12 here. Seven again. Ooh, off that tape too. High ball. Okay. I got a tip. All right. This is your first spike of the video. Yes. Two blocks up. Two big blocks, Tony UT, maybe a smaller blocker there. Is that what you were going for in this fight? Yeah, I think I was trying to go uh, over over to Newt zone, but like like we see, Cleveno was there. They he he read that uh, perfectly. Yes. And Tony UT touched me a little bit, so the the spike he slowed down the spike, so it was easier to dig. And also that ball, uh, I was speaking with the referees after because we took the challenge right after for the net touch oh, of, of yeah, Gladder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was really close, like from other camera angles, so they, they were trying to uh, to see if, the, if he touched the net or not. And uh, uh, finally they, they decided that there was not net touch, we lost the point. And I was uh, speaking after the game and the referee uh, was um, uh, trying to... Oh yeah! Yeah, trying to solve that problem and he said that I landed so close to the net and I blowed, I blowed to the net so the net moved and maybe barely touched the shirt of Gladder, but it's not the violation, so that was fine. I don't know if I can say this on the video. You can say it, you can say it. <laughs> but yeah. It, the season's like, over. Yeah. That, he thought if, that. If the rules like. Yeah. That's what the ref thought that he did to make the net move. Anyway, great. Thank you, ref. We love the refs. We love the refs. But to finish this point here, Shimura just goes a beautiful high hand swing down the line to win the point. Okay, so after a long challenge, they won the point. 13 all, Shimura serving. Ooh, forgot about that one. He went short here. After the long challenge, it was pretty high chance that he was gonna change something. Pepe, our middle. He's normally very good at these, just wasn't maybe quite ready. I'm not sure, maybe there was a communication problem, but middle blockers, very important for you guys to practice passing <laughs> so you can take these short balls and be ready. Yes? Yes, that's helping a lot. It's helping a lot. Shimura serving again, out of the timeout. Missed it. He had been serving really, really well in this set, so I just remember <laughs> being happy that he missed that ball. <laughs> Pepe serving, float or jump. Went with the jump off the tape. Nice pass. Nice. Oleg. Yeah. Nice. So again, I think you aim at Tony UT here again. Oh, maybe right in the middle. Yeah, I saw I saw the, the gladder is coming there, but of course uh, I didn't want to spike uh, his zone so yeah. I was aiming somewhere somewhere over in between maybe not over because I'm not able to but somewhere in between and luckily <laughs> I, I made a, made a finishing spot got the point that was a really nice transition by us great block touch by Elvis our setter Lukash our opposite has great ball control put up a great ball and you killed it so great play by you and us well I'm not in the game but Pepe again he jumped last time so he went with the float out of system. Clevno from France. He does that, not much to say. He just loves to hit high hands, hits up into the block, it goes out. Pretty frustrating, I'm sure, as a blocker, as a defender, it's, you obviously can't touch that, but it's a really nice swing. Okay, Gladder here, what's the score? 15 all. He had kind of been killing us a little bit in this series, serving really well. He has a really good serve. What do you, how, do, how did we prepare for, for him? Not necessarily in this situation, but throughout the, the series. Well, uh, the first thing, uh, he's really unpredictable on the surf. You never, you never know which direction he will go. He's going from the from the middle, so he was aiming middle conflict zones one five like everywhere. So we 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 have struggled for sure with his with his service. So our goal was just to put the ball somewhere near the three meter line and and play play left and right and try to try to win the point. Yeah, for sure the goal was not to to pass it perfect. No, let's see what he does here. At me. Woo, 
not mad about it. And then David. So the pass was a little bit pushed to area two, maybe one or two meters off of the net, it's hard to tell. And then just watch David. Just hanging in the air and then turning it. <laughs> that is not easy to do. David is so crazy at these plays. You know, David is one of a kind when it comes to this when it comes to turning ball from the from the middle core, from the middle net, it's really amazing because he can do it both directions and you never know as a blocker or a defender should, should, or a defender what you should do. So it's good that we, we have him and we it's good that we can play also for tempo from these difficult situations. Exactly. Real quick, you guys, Oleg talked about just getting the ball in the air on Gladder, this really difficult server. And I think it's something that we need to talk about more. If there's a really hard server, you guys, that's coming on the line, you don't have to make the pass perfect. Sometimes it's almost not possible. It's okay to keep it in the air, put it on the three meter line, put it in the middle of the court, and from there you can side out. A lot of people talk about, oh, why can't they pass that ball perfect? Well, with serves like that, it's almost impossible. To just keep in mind that you don't have to be perfect. You can put it on the three meter line, middle of the court, and you can still win the game. Especially when you're playing against a team like Poland, like it's impossible. <laughs> All right, Elvis serving. Did a spin. Not much to do here. Let's see what you do here, Olek. So nice pass. So you can see right here, sorry, four hitters are coming down at our block. It's almost impossible to stop this in this situation. You, what, what do you think your assignment was here? What do you think you were trying to do here? I was trying to help uh, help the first tempo, uh, but Tunuti played the pipe over, so it was, <laughs> I tried to just put my short hand somewhere, somewhere there. <laughs> But it's uh, David was in option uh, to position four, so there oh, was this yeah. big gap between us. Almost impossible to do so. Can't do much about that. So, bravo, Yushembia, Vienko. Did I say that right? No. Okay. Almost. Next point 16 all, Tony UT, gold medalist from France serving. Coming to you. Was that the same play? That was basically the yeah. same play. I mean, I think that's something that we actually talked about was setting a little bit more to the middles and to the back row player, if we could, if we were in the right situation, because you and Semen are so good at those pipes and we weren't setting it enough. So I think that was one thing that we did adjust for this fourth match, if I remember correctly. Okay, Klevno serving. Went with the jump. Oh, oh I actually took that ball. Yeah. Nice, high hands. So, for those of you who might not know, Oleg and I have had some problems. <laughs> in 6-1 conflict. In 6-1 conflict. It was more earlier in the season, we'll say. But I remember on this ball, seeing it pretty early and being like, I'm gonna go. Like, I have to go because we just cannot let this ball cross. So you can see that I stretch out here to my right, actually get a pretty good platform on it and make a decent pass. Again, not perfect. Two and a half meters off the net, three meters but we can set this quick offense out to Semen, who hits it high hands, very high hands, because Boye is flying on the block there, and we get the point. So again, another example of just, it doesn't need to be perfect, and we can still make the side out. The camera is shaking, you guys, because the hall was full. A little bit off. What? <laughs> Ah, okay, so the first thing is our... <laughs> Watch Kachmada's body here. Whoop. <laughs> he drops his hands, and as a blocker, why maybe are we dropping our hands in, in this situation? Okay, so uh, I think... Uh, not not always Shimoda, like any, any spiker. Like Yeah, right? the, there are some spikers that are uh, really good in using hands, uh, especially high hands, like you said before, Cleveno, Ordnaz, Shimura, but also the other players from the league and, and, and Europe yeah. are, are good in, in using this block. So just to... Uh, go in their heads and put a little bit, little, little bit uh, to make them uh, guess what we will do. Yeah. Uh, we were just putting the hands down sometimes to, like I said, it's, it's a game. Sometimes you, you, do, you put the hands down and they spike over you. Sometimes you put the hands down and they spike out. Uh, it's uh, always about the reading, reading the spikers, so what he's doing with his arm. If, if uh, his approach is, is fast or slow. Yeah. So I think it, it was the decision based on that. It was not a good decision because he was fucking diagonal, but sometimes it works. 
Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I, I don't block. I don't get, I don't get any of it basically, but that's why you just gotta read the hitter. All right, number nine, sorry. I'm gonna call him number nine. <laughs> Ooh, he goes for it. He risks a lot, so he misses eh, every so often. Lukash serving here, 1918. Oh, I forgot about that. The ace, you guys, even on one of the best receivers in the world, if you put it in the middle of the players, it can be hard to pass. So you can see right there, right in the middle of the players, a nice ace. And to help us go up two points, I think that was a big, big play there. Yeah, it was a big play. And I also didn't realize that was that far from him. It was on, almost in the in the middle court yeah. of the serve. So it was really hard to keep it up. For sure. It was perfect serve from Lukas. All right, Kachmatic serving out of the timeout, 20 to 18. Gets them ball p to position four. Ooh. Another high ball swing by Shimura. But look at our block here. Our block is, <laughs> again, I don't block, but probably not the block that we want. We talk about the inside sets that can cause some problems. For you, do you like when a high ball set is inside, outside, because you're a lefty and it's a little bit different. So where maybe do you want your high ball set? So well, it's, it depends because uh, uh, when the balls are off system like this, the blockers are not set. They are not straight in the block with the hands. They are swinging the hands. So it's easier for the spiker uh, to finish the ball. When the, it's not a fr it's the high ball, but it's not the free block. It's only the two block. Yeah. And it's not like uh, compact. It's not straight. So it's better better for spiker. So for me, uh, this ball is uh, easier than normal classic high ball from the from the court. Got it. So inside just a little bit. But that was a nice swing. Honestly, not much we could do about there. Great side out by them. Okay, Boye serving, 2019, we're up. It's crunch time, getting there. We fight it off. I think that was right between us. Nice play, nice dig. Ooh, that was a little bit lucky. So this ball, again, a really hard serve, a lot of float, we fought it off. Seven puts a good swing on here. Estrambia gets it up. He hit it into the net. I think, not much to say about that play. I think if you're the guy that set the ball on Estrambia, maybe he could have got it higher. I don't I don't know where the ball went on the side. Higher, maybe closer to the three meter line. I don't really know. We couldn't really see where he was, but we'll take the point. All right, seven serving, perfect pass. Boy, a kill. So you're blocking alone here. You're up, you're high, you're flying. But when you know you're alone, you're the only blocker, single blocker, is there something that you're thinking about or changing as a blocker? Yes, uh, for sure. Um, I can risk. I can risk more with swinging the hands. With the uh, if I can, if I'm able to read uh, which direction he will spike, I can do something with my hands to try to stop him. Uh, if I'm in two block, like on higher ball, and the middle blocker is is right next to me, then the goal is always to be straight, compact, and to uh, make the job easier for the, for the defenders. Got it. So when you're alone as a blocker, you have a little bit more freedom to, to play around because especially at this level, the hitter has such a big advantage that you kind of need to try and trick them. But as a defender, if two blockers are there, it's nice if you stay straight because you really know that where you can stand and play defense. If you're moving all around crazy, you don't always know. So one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit more moves. All right, who's serving? Shimura's serving. Yes. Again. Cool nice one. pass. Nice up. That was another play that we got a little bit lucky. Well, first of all, this pass is just beautiful. I wish that we could see it. This was like pretty much between us. I think both of us in our heads were like, just go for the ball. And you can't see your angle, but it was very nice. Great technique. Pretty good ball here. Popivchak, great libero. Digs it. Ooh, I think he, number 14 probably wants that set back. I don't think he was trying to set yeah, a we pipe were, there, Terra Porti. We were a little, little bit lucky because the, the ball, I think the idea was to set him four, the ball right in pipe, and it was a good ball to spike, we didn't jump, and the ball was just like, I don't know, maybe one, maybe two centimeters out. So. I, I actually remember it being out. I was very confident. They did a challenge and we won the challenge, but it was probably like this much. I don't know, two centimeters. It was crazy. It was much closer than I thought. But now we're up 22-20. Pepe, Christophe Reno is serving. What, 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 
Do you remember what you were thinking in this moment? Uh, I was just focusing on next ball, but I saw Pepe is confident going to the serve, and I think they maybe didn't expect him to go go strong because it was really crucial moment. Yeah, but he did did the job. And then he did this. Yeah, we can see. So he goes after it and puts it right on the back line, acing their best receiver. Just ripping it, so much confidence. We go crazy. And this is our third middle blocker. He wasn't a starter for most of the matches, but because of Norbert Huber getting injured, he came in, did so well, so so happy for him, and got that huge ace to go up 23-20. And now he's serving again. I actually wasn't sure if he was gonna go with a spin or a float, but he changed to a float. Good pass, back. Forced him out of bounds with the big block. I think our scattering report was blocking a lot of angle on Hadrava, their, their check opposite. So is that what you were thinking in this moment? Yeah, it's uh, what we were speaking a uh, few balls We before. don't want to give away too many secrets. <laughs> a few balls before, I was just, now uh, I felt the middle blocker is arriving, so I was straight, yeah. uh, straight in block, and, nice. uh, giving this line free for our defender, and sometimes he turned it down the line and he missed it. Yeah. Because he's not always a line hitter. He had been hitting most of his balls angle. So when he saw that line, I think he got excited, tried to hit it, just took off a little bit more. He missed it honestly by like this much. But now we are at match point, 24-20. Pepe serving again. I don't remember what, went with the spin. Nice serve actually, perfect pass. Did you touch that ball? Yeah, I touched it. I think I did. Too much movements. Maybe if I'm, you if I was, flashing. if I was, if I was straight, <laughs> straight there, I would maybe touch it better or block it even. But boy, yeah, I was really, really good. Yeah. Uh, in these two last two games in in finishing spikes. So. And look, actually, the ball goes to Elvis in area of two, which means that he was hitting that ball so sharp in the court, even if yeah. it hit you a little bit, which is just. Insane. But again, 24-21, we call a timeout, which I actually wasn't happy about, but it's okay. That's, it worked. It worked. Now we're at match point. We're at 24-21. I don't know what you were thinking in this moment, but I was thinking, keep the ball alive. Again, with this middle blocker serving, just get the ball up. We're gonna get the side out if we can get the ball up. Is that what kind of you were thinking here? I think I was, uh, yeah, my mentality was the same, like to keep the ball up, maybe to play soft on the block, to play patience, for sure not to try to finish every ball that we will have, yeah. uh, because we have the, still we have three chances to, to score, so uh, just to be patient and to not try to pass perfect and not try to uh, finish every, every hard ball that we'll have. But, we got lucky and he missed it. Also, okay, <laughs> first of all, yes, we won the match. Woo! Polish champions, congrats to us. Awesome win by us, but also, Watch Oleg here, he starts running. I w <laughs> Why? I need, I need to explain, yeah. Yes, explain. So, uh, during the first set, I was thinking uh, the first first thing I should do is going to Norbert. Norbert was sitting there behind the court yes. where I was going uh, at the moment. <laughs> and I saw that he's not there and then uh, we can see him uh, that he's on the. He's, he's with the Bartek, yeah. yeah. Bartek is carrying, carrying him to him. the court. It's hard to see. So I didn't see that he's uh, going all over the hall to, to be behind us. So I wanted to share this moment with him that because I, I knew that uh, uh, he was sad after the injury and uh, he needed a uh, celebration with us. We wanted to also to win for him. Yeah. Like uh, it was, uh, I think. So I wanted to share this moment to go to him, to hug him, and to to just celebrate with him. But and he, he was already, already on, on the court. Side. So that was funny. That was a funny moment. But again, awesome win by us. So happy to win the Polish championship. My first one, your second, second one, Zox are the champions. Woo! What a game. That was fun to rewatch. Did you have fun watching that? Yeah. Had you had you watched it before? I've watched like like you on the on the internet. I was reviewing uh, the place, our place, uh, <laughs> how we did that exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't watch TV version like with commentary and everything. Mm. So I need I need to go go back. For sure. But yeah, I mean that was so awesome to win 3-0 in their gym. It was just a great feeling, especially after the stress we were kind of feeling after the third match. But what do you think our key to winning was? What do you think was really important, especially in this game? Uh, well, uh, going back to the whole series, I think the, the game were really close. First game we won 3-0, but it was like 25-23, like we were winning by two points. It was so close game. The second game was also really, really long, really stressful. Five setter. We won again, same game three. So I think, uh, uh, like we were speaking before, the, the mentality of, of focusing on every single point, uh, not thinking about the, the final final result, just uh, staying together uh, because we knew that it will be hard, but we also knew that we are together in this and we can, we can do it together. So I think uh, that was the key to win. Yeah, I agree. And I think our focused effort in this match, especially in this fourth match, was crazy to be a part of. It's almost insane to look back and remember the game and how focused we were and how we spoke about every point, one point at a time. I mean, we would have beautiful, perfect volleyball plays and not even talk about it. We were on to the next point, thinking about the next serve, the next defensive play. So that was something I honestly like so inspiring to be a part of and then to learn from and to hopefully move that into the national team. But I do think that definitely was the key to victory. So you guys, the Polish Plus Liga 2021-2022 season is finished, but we actually have one more game coming up on Sunday. Oleg, what is this game? It's the CV Champions League final against Trentino from Italy uh, in Slovenia, in Ljubljana uh, on Sunday. Yes. Uh, it will be really, really tough game like the Champions League final. So uh, we hope uh, that our fans will be with us. We know that uh, some fans are going to, to Slovenia, uh, our family is going to Slovenia, so I hope also you uh, will cheer for us and uh, you will be with us on this game. Yes, exactly. So in order to watch this match, you guys, you will need to have a subscription to, or you can go to YouTube under the CEV Euro Volley page and pay a small fee to watch this one game. Again, the CEV Champions League final, a huge match, a rematch, of last year. I hope you guys can watch. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit. Oleg, thank you for being here. I appreciate it so much. Did you have fun? A little bit of fun? Yes, I had, a, I had fun and um, the dinner was really good. So thank you. Yeah, my payment was dinner. But again, thank you for coming on my channel. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you guys learned a lot. But as usual, get out, play some volleyball, have some fun. Watch us play on Sunday. Again, Eurovolley.com. And I'll see you all soon. Peace.